Ladies and gentlemen, well, listening to the remarks made earlier by some of my colleagues, I'm reminded of an Arabic expression. Darabni wabaka sabakni waishtaka, which means he hit me and he cried. He challenged me and he complained. Two weeks ago, Hamas abducted Eyal and Naftali and Gilad, three teenagers who were making their way home from school. Rather than denouncing this appalling attack, the Arab nations have the audacity to stand before you today and criticize Israel. Even after Palestinian President Abbas condemned the kidnapping, the Palestinian representative did not have the courage and dignity to denounce an attack on three schoolboys. But I suppose it should, we shouldn't be surprised. Even the Palestinians' chief negotiator, Saeb Arikat, said, and I quote, that Hamas was never involved in terrorist acts and will never be, end of quote. Let me repeat that. Arakat said that Hamas was never involved in terrorist acts and will never be. Well, Arikat deserves a PhD in theoretical physics since it seems to me that he functions in an alternative universe. But then again, he's in a very good company. Some nations give the world innovations, but the Arab nations give the world mostly oppression and aggression. Remind me, remind me of a single innovation from an Arab nation in medicine or technology. Well, the only innovation they've come with here at the United Nations lately is a single predictable pattern coming together to demonize Israel, harassing UN officials and wasting this body's time and resources. Earlier today, you got a, another lecture from representatives of Jeffersonian democracies. Today, the lecture was brought to you by the UN's own odd couple, Iran and Saudi Arabia. Back home, they're fighting a proxy war in Syria, but here at the UN, love is in the air. Ta la 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 la. Unbelievable. The only thing that they have in common, both are cradles of terrorism and radicalism in the Middle East. One created Hezbollah, and the other created Al-Qaeda. Both of these countries have the audacity to stand here and accuse Israel of human rights violations where well, they really need a good look in the mirror. Iran hangs on average two people a day. They smuggle arms to Hamas and other terrorist groups that kill innocent civilians around the world, and they're actively butchering thousands of people in Syria. And the Qataris, the Qataris, that's all very nice, quietly spreading hate-filled messages and venom? Well, let's put Qatar a bit under the microscope. Well, Qatar treats its foreign workers like slaves and still lectures others on human rights. They also spend billions of petrol dollars fighting, funding extremist fighters in Syria and murderous Hamas terrorists, yet they have the audacity to tell the world that Israel shouldn't fight terrorism. And the Saudis, the Saudis delegate reminds me of those two elderly gentlemen on the Muppet Show, Waldorf and Stadler. They sit in the balcony yelling out commentary without making any real contribution. Well, Saudi Arabia and Kuwait are always calling for human rights, unless it, of course, means advancing women's rights. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the truth is, and it's important to tell the truth in this body, is that Israel is acting to defend its citizens from terrorist networks that surround us. And the truth is, in the last two weeks, Israeli citizens came under attack from three different fronts. In the north, a missile fired from Syria killed a 13-year-old Israeli boy. In the south, rockets continued to be fired on Israel from the Gaza Strip. And in Judea and Samaria, 
three teenagers were abducted and there's been no sign of life from them since they went missing. Imagine if it were your cities under fire and your citizens under harm's way. No nation should live under these conditions and no nation should be asked to submit to terrorist groups. The only responsible course of action is to denounce terror groups and their supporters. And this is exactly what we should all be doing. Thank you very much, and I'll open it to your questions, please. Uh, yes. jo uh, Joseph Klein from uh, Canada Free Press. Could you just comment on um, the, uh, I guess, the accusation or charges that perhaps Israel overreacted in arresting three to 400 people uh, in the West Bank and Gaza in response to the abductions? Um, uh, that, that's one of the accusations that's been raised under this banner of, quote, collective punishment that they charge Israel with. Could you just comment on that? Thank of course you. I will. Look, Israel is submitted to terrorist activities day in and day out. Missiles are flying, like I told you, out of Gaza in 67 lines in green lines, basically on every city in Israel. And this has become something that people are getting accustomed to. We have teenagers being abducted. A, a, one of the Shalit released prisoners murdering an Israeli a police officer. We have, from Syria, a, Israel being attacked on the northern border. I mean, look at this small country. We are entitled to defend ourselves, and if we go after the infrastructure of Hamas, an organization that doesn't recognize Israel's right to exist, doesn't recognize any agreements, and basically pushes and promotes violence, well, that's the one thing that I think every country is allowed to do, and that is to defend its citizens, and that's what we're trying to do every day. I'm too short. Uh, Ambassador, the other criticism is the expansion of the settlements, which is, goes beyond the Palestinian, the Arab ambassadors today. Could you con kindly comment on that? Absolutely. As you know, we are trying to conduct peace negotiations to find a comprehensive uh, solution to uh, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Those are two different things. Instead of sitting and making peace with Israel, the Palestinian Authority has now jumped over to make peace with Hamas, a terrorist organization that doesn't recognize Israel's right to exist. So we have to differentiate between two things. And this is terror and murderous activities against the state of Israel, which every democratic country should defend and do everything it can again, to defend its citizens. And that's the minimum we should be doing. Uh, no one has yet come forward to actually claim responsibility for the kidnappings, yet there's been a lot of accusations around Hamas. Can you comment on that? I can only say and repeat what the Prime Minister of the State of Israel said, that uh, Hamas is behind this, and uh, we are trying to do whatever we can uh, to find uh, uh, the three teenagers. Sure, could I, I know that at an earlier stage there, there had been the complaint by, the, by, by your mission that the UN hadn't called it an abduction fast enough or it sort of had, had not. Uh, has that been resolved? Did you, did you, what have you conveyed to the Secretariat? And also the situation of Robert Seri. I, wanted to, I saw your foreign minister was quoted as saying that either he might, he might be PNG'd or his mandate might end by the end of the year. Is that the case and what's your government's thinking on Mr. Seri's uh, continued service? Two things. One, as you saw me the last time around, I said, and I repeated that, where are you? Where is the world, where is the United Nations when three teenagers are abducted? So that, uh, that question is out there, and if I'm not mistaken, but you guys are more experienced than I am, I have not seen or heard any Security Council resolution or press statement denouncing that. On the second issue, no comment. We are working on the issue. Yes. Uh, 
on Syria, uh, th th there were there was an attack. Do you know who is responsible to it? And there was a counterattack. Can can you tell us what what uh, what made Israel pick the targets it did? Well, first of all, it was the most serious uh, event that we had on the northern border for a couple of months. Uh, we uh, saw the Syrian army directly responsible for that, and the reaction was exactly to make sure that things like that do not repeat themselves. I think there should be clear lines here. The State of Israel is, uh, as you know, surrounded by uh, countries that are not exactly Benelux countries. We miss Liechtenstein and Luxembourg on the map. And if uh, countries attack us, we will uh, defend our citizens with everything that we've got. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you.